All right, guys, today my goal is to introduce you to proof through mathematical induction. Now, this is going to be fairly difficult, and so I'm going to do a couple of videos. This will be the first one, and then I'll do maybe two or three others to kind of talk you through the process and look at different situations and different examples. The first one, I'm going to specify and kind of focus on the main, the three steps that we need to, fo that we need to look at. But, you know, the, some of the algebra and stuff that goes on after that is going to be a little bit more difficult at this point in time until we get used to what we're doing and what we're supposed to be looking for. So, we're going to go ahead and start with this problem. The three steps that you need to follow for mathematical induction are this. The first thing is we need to show that it works in a situation. Now, I wrote n equals 1 here, but this can be any value. You can make sure that it just needs to work in one situation. In class, we liken this to dominoes, right? What you need to do is make sure that for that first domino, or in fact for any domino in the set, that it works, right? Once you show that it works for the first domino, which is step one, then we go on to step two and we say, okay, we're going to assume then that it works for k. Now, originally, this k can only represent 1. It can only represent the first term because that's what we've proven so far. But once we assume that it works for k, we now are going to show that it works for the next one. And if we show that it works for the next one, then that becomes k, and we show, we all, we've already showed that it works for the next one. So once we do that, once we show that it works for k plus 1, we've now shown that it works for all of the dominoes in the series. And so that's what we're going to be looking at as we look at these questions. And so I'm going to step walk you through this so that we get the idea of what we're doing. Okay, so in this first one, we're going to be looking at the first n terms of an arithmetic sequence, the sum of those, which is a series. We've done this in another way, and actually we've proven by um, more or less this method, we've done the arithmetic sequences already. We've looked at various things associated with that. So today we're going to go through it a little bit more formally and definitely some more difficult questions. So let's start with n equals 1. So I'm going to try s1 and so I'm going to put 1 in for n so 1 over 2 so this is step 1 which is show that it works okay 1 half times 2 u1 now we don't know what u1 is at this point which is fine we don't know what d is that's actually the whole point is that we can use any u1 that's the first term and then we can use any d that's a constant difference alright so from this point we need to show that it works Recognize that if we're doing the sum of the first term, there's only one term, and that term just happens to be u1. From here, we'll go 1 half times, i got to do this stuff in the parentheses first. Note that 1 minus 1 is 0. 0 times d is 0. So when I add that 0, it's just going to stay 2u1. When I do half of 2u1, of course, that gives me u1. So check. We've shown that it works for n1. So second, we're going to assume that it works for k. Now what that means is that we're just going to say, let's write it down. We're going to say, okay, that means s of k equals k over 2. Oops, no, that's not what I wanted to do. 2u1 plus n minus 1. Sorry, not n minus 1. We want k minus 1. So put that in. I don't know why that keeps popping up, sorry. Okay, so once we've got this, then we are ready for step three, which is actually where the difficult math is going to come in. Up to this point, it's fairly straightforward. Make sure that it works, and then assume that it works for k. Again, right now, k is just the first one. Okay, so now we go in and we try this for k plus 1. So we're going to say the sum of k plus 1 is equal to n, which will be k plus 1 over 2, times 2u1 plus k plus 1 minus 1, all in parentheses, d. So now our goal over the next few minutes is to show that the sum of the first k plus 1 terms will look like this, to show that it actually is the same thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite this left-hand side. Most of the work, interestingly, will be done to the left-hand side because we're trying to show that this left-hand side will give us the right-hand side. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite this such, instead of having s of k plus 1, 
That's the same thing as taking the sum of the first k terms and then adding the next term, right? uk plus 1. So it's the sum of the first k terms plus the next one, right? That's what this means, the first k terms plus the next one. Okay, now we're going to rewrite that, the uk plus 1, because we know that to find a specific term of an arithmetic sequence, we can just go u1 plus, and then here, you know your equation is u1, uh, sorry, un equals u1 plus n minus 1 times d. Well, n in this case is k plus 1, so it's k plus 1 minus 1, so it's just kd. So plus kd. All right, so we've replaced that. We're simplifying it a little bit, getting it to terms that we can work with, right? There's no uk plus 1 up here, so we want to get rid of that. In fact, there's no sk here either, which is where this step 2 is going to be important because there's your sk. sk is this right here. So we're going to replace sk with our assumption in step 2. This is an essential step for all of these inductions. So sk we're going to replace with k over 2 times 2u1 plus k minus 1 times d, and then we've got the plus u1 and then plus kd. Now, at this point, you may or may not be able to see how this is going to relate to what we did before, but it will start to come out as we start to do some of this simplification. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and distribute this k over 2 to both of those. All right, so k over 2 times 2u1 is just going to be ku1. And then I'm going to have plus, and I'm just going to write this one in front, k over 2 times k minus 1 times d. That was an easy simplification, the 2 over 2. That's why I went ahead and did it. Plus u1 plus kd. Now, I see up here that there's a common factor. There's two, common ter there's two terms inside the parentheses. Right now, I've still got four terms. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can turn these four terms into less terms. And the way that you do that is by looking for common factors. Now, one of the things that I see is that these two right here, I'm going to do a form of grouping. You may have learned grouping back in Algebra 1. If not, you should have learned it in Algebra 2. I'm going to do a form of grouping. I'm going to take out the common factor here, which is u1. So I'm going to rewrite u1. Take u1 out of this one, I'm left with k. Take u1 out of this one, I'm left with plus 1. And then I'm going to look at the next two. What's the common factor there? Well, they both have a k and they both have a d. And so that's what I'm going to take out. I'm going to go plus kd. And then what would be left if I take out the kd? Well, this one would be k minus 1 over 2. And this one would be plus 1. All right, so now we're starting. This is starting to seem kind of like there's a k plus 1, right? Which is there's a k plus 1, there's a u1 in front, and then I've got a d in the back. Okay, things are starting to, there's only one d now, right? Which is important. So things are starting to get a little bit closer. There's only one u1, right? So the things that I'm doing all have a purpose. It may be difficult to see these at the beginning, but the more that you do, the easier it will be to work through these. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and do the stuff in the parentheses and simplify those. And so I'm going to go ahead and bring it up here. And so I'm going to go u1 k plus 1 plus kd. And 1 is the same thing as 2 over 2, so I'm going to add those two together. So I'm going to have k minus 1 plus 2, which is the same thing as ooh, k plus 1. How about that? All over 2, of course. Now you can see this is getting a lot closer to what we want because there's the k plus 1 over 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually take k plus 1 over 2 out of both of these. Now you might be able to do that right off the bat. If not, what you may want to do is say, well, this isn't quite k plus 1 over 2 yet. So in order to do that, I'm going to take this term and I'm going to multiply it by 2 over 2. right? And you can do that to one term because 2 over 2 is 1. You're going to multiply that term by 2, and then you're going to divide it by 2. It just changes what it looks like. It doesn't change what it is. So from here, we now have this. I'm going to factor out the k plus 1 over 2. And that leaves me with 2u1 plus kd. 
And that last step, of course, is really easy because that's just k plus 1 minus 1. So that's just adding 1 to k and then subtracting 1 from k. It's just like what I just did, multiplying it by 2 and dividing it by 2. And so that last step I can write out just as 2u1 plus, I'm going to take k and add 1 to it. But if I add 1 to it, I've got to subtract 1 so that it stays the same. And then the d, of course, and then close parentheses. You've now shown by induction that these things are definitely equal to each other. All right, so there is an example for you if you would like to see another one. And I would, my students are going to do this. I'm going to require this. Please watch the second and third videos as well. Ciao.